Hi guys, welcome to Exposed. I'm your host, Kelsey McDonald. On this show, we seek out local musicians and give them exposure for their music. Hey guys, I'm Kelsey McDonald. Welcome to this week's episode of Exposed. Today we are in Nashville, Tennessee for the 8123 tour with the main, A Rocket to the Moon and This Century. Hey guys, we're here at the main. So you guys released your album in June, Forever Halloween. Where does the name come from? Uh, it kind of derives from the idea that we uh, can sometimes be under the, the impression that the silly hats that we wear or the, the clothes that we're wearing kind of dictate who we are as people. Um, and it's just, I guess it works with the process that we went through just because uh, we kind of stripped away all the, the shiny stuff and did it the old fashioned way. We recorded it live to tape and the way rock should be recorded. We just put it out uh, unsigned independently. Uh, that's the newest order of business on our end. And besides that, we'll be we'll be on on the road everywhere forever. Uh, we have forever, forever <laughs> yeah. So how did you guys come up with the name for your band? It was uh, we had a show in a couple days and we needed a band name and there was a song uh, by a band called I Ivory called the Coast of Maine and we thought it was an okay band name and we just. Just stuck. <laughs> it just stuck. <laughs> so what band has influenced you guys the most? What band? Yes. Um, I think just any band that stood up for what they believed in. Um, I think Wilco is a great example. Yeah. Any artist that really refused to compromise uh, for the betterment of, you know, the outside pressures or, uh, you know, maybe for a get rich quick scheme or something like that so um, yeah anybody that's making true stuff real honest music hey guys I'm here with Joel lead singer of the century so for anyone who hasn't like listened to your band before how would you describe your sound I would say um, pop rock with a groove are there any bands that you think you're similar to that you really like? Maybe like Maroon 5, mm -hmm. their later stuff, possibly. Yeah, something, something along those lines. So how did you guys get the name for your band? Uh, that was actually, we had a, we had originally called ourselves, well actually no, we had two names, but our second name was Evident Earth, and we realized at some point that that's a terrible band name to have. <laughs> and so we decided to change it, um, and after about a week of trying to come up with a name, Sean said something to the effect of, "We need a, we need to come up with a band name sometime this century." And I don't know. I think he had like a eureka moment. He's just like, "Oh, that's it." Um, so he called me up, and I was like, "Sure, why not? It's better than what we have now." So you guys released your second full album in May. Tell me about the album. And it's titled "Biography of Heartbreak," and. Um, we did it independently. Um, the first one we did with uh, Warner Brothers, so I would say this one felt a lot more. Um, I don't know. I think I think we had a lot more creative control. We weren't uh, having to report to anyone or you know factor in anyone else's opinions. It was just pretty much us for making the record, and um, we had a lot of time to to make this record as well. The first first record we only had about two months to really finish the entire recording process in this one we did it over a span of like a year it just feels feels a lot more um, personal I guess for us so for like future albums do you think you'll want to do all of them independently did you like doing that I liked the independent thing um, for that creative reason um, I mean there are pros and cons um, but yeah, I mean, I like I like doing this, how we did it independently. Um, I just felt like we had a lot more time to really sit and reflect on 
exactly what it was that we had to say.